Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of March. India-Pakistan officials meet to finalize setting up of cross-border pilgrimage corridor. India disappointed as China blocks bid to list Masood Azhar as global terrorist. An Afghan CEO says peace possible if Taliban cuts ties with insurgents. And now for all the details. The first meeting between officials of India and Pakistan to finalize modalities of setting up of cross-border Kartarpur pilgrimage corridor were held on Indian side of the Atari Vaga border on Thursday. The corridor will be used by Sikh pilgrims coming from India on a visa-free basis to visit holy sites in Pakistan. The first meeting between officials of India and Pakistan to finalize the modalities for setting up of a cross-border Sikh pilgrimage corridor were held on the Indian side of the Atari Vaga border on Thursday. The meeting for Kartarpur Corridor came amid heightened tensions between the two nations over last month's terror attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir, claimed by a Pakistan-based terror group. Indian officials informed after the meeting that both the sides held detailed and constructive discussions on various aspects and provisions to operationalize the visa-free pilgrimage corridor. A reciprocal Indian visit will also be held on the Pakistani side of the border on 2nd of April. The Pakistan side agreed to um, have this joint uh, field survey come discussion on the various technical aspects of the alignment, height, width, etc. of the uh, infrastructure on both sides on 19th of March uh, in the next few days. And uh, after that is done, uh, this would be followed with the full-scale delegation uh, reciprocal visit where we would like to take this uh, today's discussions forward. So in that uh, spirit, it has, we have agreed to hold the next meeting at Vaga uh, on uh, the 2nd April. Last November, both India and Pakistan had agreed to set up the Kartarpur Corridor to link the historic Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan, the final resting place of Sikh faith's founder Guru Nanak Dev Ji, to Dera Baba Nanak in India's Gurdaspur district. The corridor will be used by Sikh pilgrims coming from India on a visa-free basis to visit holy sites in Pakistan. It is expected to officially open in November this year on the occasion of the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak. India on Wednesday said it was disappointed over China's move to block India's bid at the United Nations to declare Jaish e Mohammed chief Masood Azhar a global terrorist for the fourth time. Pakistan-based Jaish e Mohammed terror group has claimed a ghastly suicide bomb attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir last month, which killed at least 40 Indian security personnel. India's foreign ministry said on Wednesday that India was disappointed over China blocking the bid at the United Nations to list Jaish e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. The foreign ministry said in a statement that China's move has prevented action by the international community to designate the leader of Jaish e Mohammed, a proscribed and active terrorist organization which claimed responsibility for the terrorist attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir on February 14th. I think what they are gaining by doing this is that they are showing their full support for their ally and their friend Pakistan. Uh, we are a little surprised that China is doing it once again for the fourth time as you rightly said. This time there was certain momentum which had gathered pace for listing of Masood Azhar. 
The US, UK and France had asked the Security Council Sanctions Committee to subject JEM founder Masood Azhar to an arms embargo, travel ban and asset freeze. The 15-member committee operates by consensus. The February 14 attack that killed at least 40 paramilitary police personnel was the worst in decades, escalating tension between the nuclear-armed neighbors, India and Pakistan. Moving on, experts on Wednesday discussed Pakistan's support to terrorism and its doctrine of first and even an early use of nuclear weapons during a conference on the sidelines of the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva. They said such a stance creates a worrying and destabilizing situation in South Asia. Pakistan's support to terrorism and its doctrine of first and even an early use of nuclear weapons creates a worrying and destabilizing situation in South Asia. Experts opined at a conference on the sidelines of the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva. The experts voiced their concerns against the backdrop of last month's deadly suicide bombing targeting security forces in India's Jammu and Kashmir, while noting that it was carried out by Pakistan-based terror group jaish e mohammed or JEM. They also discussed that when India conducted airstrikes on JEM's terror camps inside Pakistan in the aftermath of the Kashmir attack, Pakistani lawmakers instead threatened to use nuclear weapons in retaliation. That many ministers or many people from the parliament in Pakistan started actually to threaten that they have nuclear weapons and they will use them. You know, that is a very reckless situation in which uh, a nuclear capable state is threatening in its parliament to use nuclear weapons because terrorists in their country uh, were attacked. The problem with Pakistan is that we've been looking at it from a security point of view. So yes, the, there, is, there are links with uh, insurgent groups and it's a security threat. Pakistan has long been accused by its neighbors, India and Afghanistan, of sheltering terror groups which mount attacks on their soil. The United Nations Security Council continues to have 139 entries from Pakistan in its updated list of terrorists and militant groups. Meanwhile, Baloch political activists held a demonstration on Wednesday outside UN building in Geneva to raise the issues of gross human rights violation by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. Activists have long blamed that Pakistani forces use extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances as means to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. Baloch political activists gathered outside the United Nations building in Geneva on Wednesday to protest against gross human rights violations by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. The demonstration was held during the ongoing 40th session of the UN Human Rights Council to raise issues of abductions, enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings being committed by Pakistani security forces to muzzle dissenting voices in Balochistan. The protesters blamed that the atrocities on locals have intensified in Balochistan since the launch of multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPAC in the region. We uh, intend to you know, get the attention of the UN, UN bodies and the UN reporters particularly to the human rights abuses in Pakistan. Unfortunately, the people in Balochistan, they are facing military operations, the, they are facing you know, enforced disappearances, uh, our identity is at threat, our land is occupied. A major demand is uh, stop CPAC because CPAC is a death sentence for Baluch people and uh, we are demanding from United Nations that they should materialize their treaties and their conventions who are which are to protect uh, the people from genocide from torture that Baloch people are going through the activist also blamed that Pakistani media has completely blacked out the situation in Balochistan a region under Pakistan's illegal occupation they have been protesting worldwide to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations through protest and awareness campaigns. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan leadership including Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah and President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday said that peace in Afghanistan is possible if Taliban cuts ties with insurgents. The leader said the final decision about the peace agreements with the Taliban will be made by Afghan government only. 
Afghanistan's chief executive Abdullah Abdullah on Wednesday said the conditions for peace will improve and the hopes for peace will increase if the Taliban cuts its ties with other insurgent groups. Abdullah during an event said if the news about U.S. and Taliban agreements are true, then a part of Afghanistan's problems will be resolved. Present at the same event, President Ashraf Ghani said the final decision about peace agreements with the Taliban will be made by the Afghan government only. اگر همین خبری که پخش شده واقعیت داشته باشه که امیدوار هستیم داشته باشه و همه طور واقعی شود یک قسمت از مشکل افغانستان حل میشه چرا میدانیم که گروه های تروریستی با تعاملی که ایجاد کردن در یک محیطی که طالب ها بر از اونا ایجاد کردن اونا از یک طرف جنگ و خشونت در افغانستان دامن میزنن از طرف دیگه اهداف بر کشورهای خودم دارن مالکیت پروسه سل از مردم و دولت است سل ما سنجیده شده و از متن مطالبات مردم است Afghan government has now announced April 29 as a final date for the Loya Jirga, a traditional assembly of Afghan delegates from all layers of the society to discuss peace. This comes at a time when 16-day talks between the US and Taliban in Doha just ended with agreement in draft on two key issues under debate. More news from Afghanistan. Parliamentary election candidates in Afghanistan protested outside the Attorney General's office on Wednesday to probe electoral fraud. The candidates demanded the final result of the parliamentary elections should not be announced because of the fraud. A group of protesting parliamentary election candidates on Wednesday gathered outside the Attorney General's office or AGO in Afghan capital Kabul, calling on the judicial body to investigate electoral fraud and corruption in the parliamentary polls. The candidates said the final results of the parliamentary elections should not be announced because of the fraud. They also accused the former election officials of committing national treason. زامدیم که یک بار بخوایم صدای عدالت خواهی ما نه بلند کنیم که تا به دوسیا بررسی دقیق صورت گیره اونا تایید و تصدیق کردن که ما ای اسناد و ثبوت و شواهد تا به 10 سال هم نمیتونیم بررسی کنیم چون بسیار مقدار زیاد است بنا اونا میخوان تصمیم سیاسی بگیرن Meanwhile the attorney general's office said corruption and fraud allegations against the former members of the election commissions are under investigation the candidates protested as the election commissions have now new heads and members. The new commissioners were sworn in on March 4th, replacing 12 former commissioners. A drug awareness rally was taken out by school students on Wednesday in India's northern Srinagar city to create awareness about the harmful effects of smoking. The rally was organized on the occasion of No Smoking Day. With an objective of creating awareness among the people about the harmful effects of drug addiction, a rally was organized in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province on the occasion of No Smoking Day. More than 200 students from different schools of Srinagar city participated in the rally and spread the message of shunning drugs and adopting sports for healthy living. The student passed through the busy roads of the city holding placards and raising slogans for motivating people to quit smoking. ये एक रैली है जिसकी जिसके जिससे हम पीपल लोगों को अवेयर करना चाहते हैं कि स्मोकिंग कितनी डेंजरस है उनके लिए क्योंकि जैसा हमें पता है कि स्मोकिंग की वजह से बहुत सारे مختلف किस्म के कैंसर्स होते हैं तो हम इस रैली से लोगों को बताते हैं कि आप स्मोकिंग छोड़ दीजिए यू शुड क्विट स्मोकिंग बिकॉज़ इट्स रियली हार्मफुल एंड अगर आप स्मोक कर रहे हैं तो यू आर किलिंग योरसेल्फ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लैक्स ऑफ पीपल आर इन्वॉल्वड इन दिस सच अ बैड हैबिट उनको ये नहीं पता होता कि जब वो स्मोक कर रहे होते हैं दूसरे लोग भी इस गंदी हैबिट में इंडल्ज हो चुके होते हैं पुराने जमाने में तो बड़े-बड़े ही लोग करते थे लेकिन अब छोटे बच्चे भी इस गंदी हैबिट में इंडल्ज हो चुके हैं और स्मोकिंग से कैंसर बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम्स होती है no Smoking Day, which is observed on second Wednesday of every March across the world, is aimed at drawing attention to the health hazards of smoking. Different seminars and competitions are also organized on the day to spread awareness among people about the ill effects of drug addiction and ways to overcome the menace. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.